Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. I'm here with Jessica Ramirez. We thank you for joining us. We're going to be breaking down a lot today, so let's get started now. All right, thanks, Aaron. So, Jessica, let me ask you, now the prosecution has a second bite at this with these eight counts. Uh, they really want to secure the conviction against him. I mean, it's great that they got the forcible rape, could get nine years uh, based upon the other counts as well, but they really didn't win the way they wanted to win. Where do you think they were lacking in their first case? I think that the victims weren't very prepared. Um, Jane Doe, number two, which was the um, rape uh, charge, she wasn't prepared. She didn't remember a lot of the uh, specific facts. It was difficult for, I think, um, when they were, they were questioning her, well, you followed him to the fence. You, he told you to take off your clothes, and you did. I think that it was very difficult for the jury to buy. This was one, a woman that was scared. This was a woman that was about to be raped, but yet followed the um, accuser to the fence and did what she was told. So I think it was very difficult, right, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt um, that he was guilty of rape with um, Jane Doe. So maybe they'll. You don't coach the witnesses, though, and they say, well, this is what you didn't do so great the first time. We really need you to make that point. You can't s well, tailor yeah. their testimony. Well, you don't coach them, but you definitely want to prepare them, and um, you want to prepare them, prepare them for the questions that the defense or the other side is going to ask, and the very tough questions that you have to be prepared for. And, um, and I think they failed to do that. Or maybe they did, um, but she definitely wasn't prepared. I, I always wonder if it was a matter of demeanor. You know, some of this, uh, I think it might have been Jane Doe number one, where the demeanor was sort of matter of fact, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you could argue it was a bit theatrical. And so if that doesn't play well for a jury, may, I don't know how you tell her. I mean, she's recounting a story. She's mm -hmm. recounting her, uh, what happened to her. And it's not fair to say this is how she retold it, but at the same point, Jurors are made up of human beings, and they're trying to determine whether or not this, these witnesses are credible, given mm -hmm. the witness testimony is the strongest, if not the only, evidence they have against him. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of everything, right? It's her demeanor. It's how she expressed herself. Um, she didn't cry. She wasn't emotional. She was a very matter-of-fact, and she followed this man um, who she wants the jury to believe she was scared of and was about to rape her. So I think it's a little, a little bit of everything. That's why you definitely, I don't like to say coach, but prepare the witness, because we are making making value judgments on their appearance and how they express themselves, how they sit, what they're saying, what they look like. So all of that comes into play. What about the defense? And I say this because the defense, they didn't win with the hung jury. Uh, they lost certain counts, but they also didn't lose with those hung counts. You know, because the, the question is, do they go forward with the same strategy? I say this because if they are able to convince a jury or they're able to get a hung jury as to the eight counts, let's say again, mm -hmm. does the state retry him? I mean, how many times can you get a hung jury before the state gives up? They're, they're in the position of either trying to get not guilty or hung, right? And do they change their strategy or does whatever they did in the first trial, it worked? I think it's they will probably have to keep their same strategy. I mean, again, they're not saying it never happened. Um, yeah. They are saying, yes, it did happen. They had sex, but it was consensual. So they're going to have to keep the same strategy that this is a woman that um, doesn't remember. She can't be trusted. She's not credible. Uh, it was consensual. They knew each other. So I think they're going to have to keep the same strategy maybe even go harder, right? And make the victim feel even worse uh, when she goes back up. I'm gonna ask you this because we've had a split of opinion on this. There are people who say, trying all of these events together is a win for the prosecution. The reason I say that is because even in the closing argument, the prosecutor said, hey, if you think that he raped Jane Doe number two, you can use that to determine if he raped Jane Doe number one, which I got to tell you from a lawyer perspective, pretty outrageous that you're telling a juror, well, if the evidence is not so strong with one of the counts, you can use the other one to bolster it up. I mean, that seems pretty foreign, but that's what they did. They had all these uh, accounts together and it, it's a win in the sense that, hey, listen, we're putting together this pattern of evidence. We're putting it all together. It doesn't look great. The other way of looking at it for the defense is, if they're striking the credibility of one of the Jane Doe's, she doesn't look so credible, it kind of hurts the testimony of the other Jane Doe's. Where do you stand on whether or not it's beneficial to try all of these cases, all of these counts, and all of these events together? Well, I think it's beneficial because it, there is a pattern, right? These are older women, um, transient women, homeless women, so there's a, a pattern in the victims, and they're all saying that 
they were raped. So there's a similar pattern of victims, similar pattern of criminal activity. So I think I can see why they would want to try them together. I think where probably they missed um, the mark is that it was a little bit confusing um, with so many victims and because there were different uh, women and homeless and transient, we had different victims bring who, who they were out to the, for the jury to decide whether they were credible. So I can see why it was a good thing and then I can see why it backfired because there's this human nature right, uh, aspect to the world and to trials. What do you say about this jury that you could have a danger where they say, oh, clearly he must have done at least one of these counts to one of these Jane Doe's so we're going to find him guilty on all the counts. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. They find him guilty of the forcible rape of Jane Doe number two, but they were deadlocked as to the sodomy charge. What, do you, what does that tell you about the jury? I What tells me were, what I've seen in different juries is probably they believe that he was guilty in the other counts, but they didn't have enough, right? Because juries really take their job very seriously. And do we have enough beyond a reasonable doubt to convict for this victim? Well, he probably did it, but we just don't have enough to right. go above the reasonable doubt. That's what it says to me, but because I don't know. Because it's so know. fact specific, those kinds of intimate exactly. details. And unfortunately, that's what the jury ultimately has to go through. And that's what this new jury will ultimately have to go through. We're gonna talk more about Kellen Winslow after our break and focus on Jane Doe number one. Stay tuned.